Coming to the ring first, Tommy TNT Fury. How, when you're making a lot of money, well-known boxer, how do you keep grounded and stay humble? Money comes and goes, but I'll tell you what doesn't. The memories of what that person used to be like. I'm Tommy Fury and I just want to be the best version of myself that I can be. He's a professional boxer, he's undefeated, he's 10 and 0. Can we please show some love to the one and only Mr. Tommy TNT Fury? My brother! Thank you to everybody who's come out tonight in the support of this man here. Absolutely, if it wasn't for him we wouldn't all be here. And uh, listen, it's an honour to be here, honour to be on stage with you lovely people, and uh, yeah, let's have a great night. And I've got a question for you, Brad, because we spent a lot of time together, and you guys probably know, over the last um, year or so, I've lost a, uh, I've lost a lot of weight, um, and I've been, I've been watching Tommy, and I've been like, picking his brains, man. You know, like with the property, with the mentoring and stuff, we're like, picking mentors' brains, how much is the re... I've been doing it with Tommy, but with fitness, and I've been like, how do you stay in shape all year round? How are you such, so, so, like, well-built? So, all year round, I mean, geez, even when we're, we've been having, you know, a few drinks, meals out, the next morning, this guy is up at 6 a.m. every morning doing a run. How do you stay in shape all year round and keep that discipline? So, I think lifestyle, you know, fitness, I think a lot of people see it as a chore to be, you know, I've got to get in the gym, I can't eat anything bad, you know, I can't drink alcohol, can't go on the weekends with my mates. I think everybody needs to just get rid of that because, you know, being fit and healthy, it's not something that you want to do for six months, 12 months, four weeks, five weeks, whatever you want. It's something that you want to carry with you for a lifetime. And for me, being a professional athlete and, you know, being a full-time boxer is what I am. What I find is not every day has to be like a training camp. So when I'm preparing for a fight and getting ready for a fight, it's very, it's very, you know, hardcore. It's very do nothing else. And I can only eat, sleep, train, boxing. But everybody else has a life. Like that's not everybody's job. And I understand that. If I can get up in the morning, do a little 5K, nothing big. Even me as a professional athlete, as somebody likes to call me, I go and do a three mile run. I don't do 12 miles. I don't do 15 miles. It's not impressive. Everybody does a 5K. But doing a 5K every morning will help you be fit and healthy. Instead of going to the Burger King on your lunch break, go and have some, I don't know, tuna pasta or whatever you want, a steak, chicken breast, whatever. It doesn't need to be as hard as people think. And I think people get lost in the confusion that being healthy and fit and looking great means that you have to sacrifice so much because it's really not the way. Me, myself and I, I have a great time with my mates. I have a social life. I have a professional life. I have a family life which includes a lot of TGI Fridays at the minute with the baby and whatnot, she likes it there. So, um, you know, there is ways around it, but I say, move a little, eat a little, and you'll be fine. Do you find it hard when you're, you're the only one that has to be a professional athlete? Like, I know you guys went skiing, right? And Ricky wasn't getting out with you at 6 a.m. in the morning. Well, hold on a minute. No, no, he was, he was, he was. Hold on a minute, hold on, he a, was. Minute. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Before that conversation carries on, I did get up at 6 a.m. in the morning and go for a run. I did it once, never again. Do you know, we find in property, when you're around people that are similar to you, it makes it much easier. It's much harder if you're the only one doing it. Like, are you, are you, are you surrounding yourselves with other people that are training and keeping fit, or are you the sort of the one having to lead the way all the time? I'm not around anybody who's really so healthy and gym active like around me like it's not like that my personal life is very very normal that's why I'm so confident in speaking to all you guys that you can do it in your lives because I'm around a ton of people that pretty much hate fitness I'm only really that dedicated because I know that's my form of trying to fulfill my dream because when I was you know nine ten years old I said to myself that I was going to be a world champion and regardless what anybody thinks I know I can do it I've got the dedication to get there and everything's go, going right along the track. So my dedication comes not from trying to keep fit and healthy. It comes from fulfilling a promise that I made to myself. So it's like when I do go out on the weekends, when I do have a drink, when I do eat a little bit of bad food, I'll be up at six in the morning when nobody else is up and I'll be running on them roads. You know, that's what it's about. It's about having passion and dedication. Both lead to, the, the you know, Rick, Ricky's journey, for example. Ricky has lost a ton of the weight. I can only respect him and say congratulations and keep on that path. You've done absolutely amazing. I'll tell you what, what, what made it um, a whole bunch easier is being 
around people like you and Samuel. You know, Samuel's lost a lot of weight. Yeah, what a boy, what a boy! Actually, I'm curious, because Samuel's lost a whole bunch of weight, and it's easy when you're around other people, and it's actually funny because um, we were actually watching a fight that Samuel had, um, maybe you guys have seen it, with a guy called Rob Moore, um, not so long ago, and we were showing Tommy the fight, and we were like, man, what, what, do you, what, what were your thoughts on the, on the Sam, Samuel Leeds and, and Rob Moore fight? What did you think when you saw it? To be honest with you, I thought it was a great fight. I take my hat off to both men. Um, they trained hard, and they competed well, and it was a great fight for the crowd. But obviously, our man came out on top, as I've seen. So big respect. Yeah, you know what I found out recently? I didn't know this before, but you went on Rob Moore's podcast. You went on Rob Moore. I was getting on super well with Tommy. I was chatting with him, and then I was like, and I was like, and he, I think he must have slipped out. I was like, motherfucker, you went on Rob Moore's podcast. But it's all good because you're here now with us. But um, what do you think of Ricky's? Me and me and Ricky been sparring. You've been critiquing the footage. What, what do you think of me and Ricky sparring and fighting? And what are you saying? If I had to put it down to one thing, I'd say you and Ricky are very game. Both men like a punch up, bit of a tear up, and they'll go at any time, which is probably all you need for, a, for the fight game, I'll be honest. But other than that, I'd say Ricky needs to taste a bit of leather. Oh. <laughs> needs to taste a bit of leather. <laughs> We're meant to be friends, bro. No, no, I mean, don't. I will square up right now if you want to go. I, I think you better rethink that answer. I can square up, but the thing is, bruv, right? <laughs> you ain't ever gonna fight, so. No, do you know what it is? I'll be honest. When we, uh, when we. <laughs> He's sitting down now. <laughs> when we spar, when we, when we spar, I'm very conscious. And I, listen, I'm just being, I'm leveling with you guys. I'm being transparent. When we spar, I'm conscious that, you know, we're running training programs and I don't want to come in all cut and stuff. So I'm just like, <laughs> let's go easy. But I've hit punch bags with you, bro. Like, he was holding the pads, and he said, go on, give it some. And I, I, I whacked the punch bag, and Tommy was like, Fuck. I almost broke your hand, didn't I? Didn't, didn't I? Yeah. yeah, he did. He did. That leads me into the surgery that I had on my middle knuckle because of, of Ricky. Um, he punches that hard. But to be honest with you, I've had a lot of people in the gym training, and, um, you know, I've had fighters come into the gym saying, oh, I've done this and I've done that. I'm a killer. I'm like, all right, show me what you got. Go on the punch bag for 20 seconds. They'll hit it for 20 seconds, like... <sighs> It's like, killers don't get tired this quick. And it, Let me ask you a question, Tommy. How, um, you're from like super humble beginnings, right? Yeah. So how, when you're making a lot of money, well-known, boxer, how do you keep grounded and stay humble? Very, very easily. Like, you know, ever since, ever since I went on Love Island and, you know, everybody started knowing who I was, like, the celebrity status for me, I'm never, ever a guy to tip me, to tip me nose up with somebody. Like, I'm from Salford. You know, from a normal, normal family. Yeah, Tyson is what he is. Yes, we all know that. But I'm not Tyson. You know, I'm not here to lay off what he's done. Tyson's, what he's done in his career is his own life. He's the, in my eyes, he's, he's, the, he's, he's the greatest who ever did. And I know everyone's going to say what they're going to say. He's my brother and this and that. But it's my opinion. What he's done, he's done. That's remarkable for him. But me, I'm Tommy Fury, and I just want to be the best version of myself that I can be. Not only for me, but for the new family I've got. Just because you've got a bit more money in your pocket doesn't mean it gives you the right to tip your nose up at everybody else and think you're better than them, because you're really not. Money comes and goes, everything comes and goes in life. But I'll tell you what doesn't, the memories of what that person used to be like. Because as long as people can say to me, do you know what, I met that Tommy fella in real life and he wasn't what everyone cracks him up to be, he wasn't what the media says about him, he's a humble, nice guy. And I don't care, like, the, the money that I've earned, what I've done, it doesn't interest me because you can't take it with you. I'm all about memories. I want to have a lovely family, lots of kids so they can live on and, 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 and spread the last name. And I want to have a good, you know, enjoyable life. But money for me doesn't come into that. What do I do? Yeah, all right, with all this money that you can earn and what you can do with it, it's one thing. But does anything really get better than going down to the Tesco, doing the shop, stress-free? Taking your kid to the, taking your kid and your missus, taking your kid and your missus to, to the park, feeding the ducks, seeing your daughter laugh and smile. Does it really get better than that? And that costs absolutely nothing. So here's what it is. You spoke about your hand. Um, you've, you've had surgery on your hand. Um, so how is that recovery process going? And have you got plans for any upcoming fights or anything? What, what's the plan for the future, bro? So yeah, I went uh, undergrow surgery uh, on my middle local there. I did everything but break it. Uh, and there's bone damage in there. There was torn tendons. There was a lot. You know, I had a guy who did it. He, he did over 60 surgeries for the best fighters in the world. 
and he said that he was easily one of the worst he's seen. I'm lucky enough to make a full recovery. I'm aiming and working towards every day to getting back in the ring um, December time. That's my time. I want to get back in the ring because, you know, be it what it is, I don't want to be an inactive fighter, and that's what I've been. So I just want to get back underneath, uh, underneath the lights, show the guys what it's all about, and, and have fun because don't forget I'm a fighter. I love having I love having a fight. Oh, I'm always curious, right? Because um, you know, we, me, Russell, Samuel, we all get together, and when, whenever there's a big fight on the TV, we get we go around Samuel's house. We will get together and watch the fights, and I'm always curious. Right, there's a whole big build up to the fight. You've got the undercard and then you've got the main fight. And I'm always thinking, what is going through their head when they're in the tunnel about to walk out? You've been in that, you've been on the biggest stages in a tunnel about to come out to millions of people watching you. How do you deal with the pressure and what is that feeling like? I think it's, you know, the, the, probably the biggest high profile fight I've had. Um, you know, and everybody can say what it is. Yeah, it wasn't for a world title, but it meant a lot to me because it was me, you know, a fighter without 10 fights, you know, an inexperienced fighter in the ring with another inexperienced fighter going toe to toe in front of the whole world. Yeah, fair enough. I might have done it a few more years than he has, but it's still a lot of pressure on, on a young kid's shoulders. So when I was in that tunnel, I just thought to myself, do you know what? There's, there's millions around the world watching this. Everybody's gone on about it. Ronaldo's in the stands, Mike Tyson's front row. Like, I didn't know if I could hack the pressure. I really didn't. And that was the build-up of the entire fight. Everyone was like, is he going to crack under pressure? Is he not? And I didn't know, because how can you answer that question when you've never been in that predicament? So I was in the tunnel. I was tapping my gloves together, and I thought, you know what? You only get one life, and I'm living it. This is what I've dreamt of since being introduced to boxing, and I've got it in front of me now. So I don't care who's in front of me. What, what is asked of me? I'm going to go out there do the best that I can, I'm going to enjoy myself. And when I got into that mindset and just removed all the pressure and forget what everybody else thought and went out in there and had fun, I put on a performance, come away with a win. You know, in my eyes, it was a unanimous win. It was an easy fight for me. And, and I enjoyed the full thing. And I believe that's what it's about. When you get those big experiences and big chances, it's very important not to think about what everybody else is going to think. Instead of thinking about that, just go out there and have fun for yourself. Because you don't get too many moments in like that in life. So it's very important you go out there, take advantage of it, and just enjoy the whole thing. And that's what I did, man. That's why I'm here today. I just enjoy everything that I do. That was, that was actually much higher pressure than most people. It was almost a career-defining moment, wasn't it, really? Going, you had to win that fight. Yeah, no, definitely, because that, that was a fight for me. It had been brewing, it had been brewing for two and a half years. And I got in the, you know, if I'd have lost that fight... I owe it to myself, I would have never put on a pair of boxing gloves again, I just wouldn't. Because if I couldn't beat Jake Paul, I was never going to beat anyone worth beating. So I thought to myself, do you know what, I'm either going to be a boxer or I'm not going to be a boxer. Whatever God wants for me, God's plan for me, I'm just going to walk down that road. So I did it. And at the end of the day, I thank my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ for everything. And he's given me, he's given me the platform to speak like this, to speak humbly, to speak freely about what's important. The win's not important, it's about holding on to a dream that you make yourself as kids. And I'm very, very adamant on whatever you want to be as a kid, don't let anybody talk you out of it. Because I said to, I said to everybody in primary school, high school, I said, I want to be a boxer. I complete, I'm not saying this is the right way to go, I'm just telling you what I did. I gave up on everything. And everyone said to me, what happens if this doesn't work out? I said, well, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But at the minute, if I think like that, it's never going to work out. I'm going to be a boxer. I'm going to make me a living from boxing. I'm going to be a success. And whether I've done the world title fights or not, I've been successful. I've, I hold an undefeated record, so how can they go against me? So at the end of the day, believe in what you want to do and don't let anybody stop you and go out there and be what you want to be. Because life is too short. So be what you want to be and go out and get it. I can tell that you, you're totally focused on becoming that world champion. You obviously totally believe that, which is amazing. How, what's the plan? How are you gonna How are you gonna go to that to that level of becoming a world champion? You know, quite easy in my mind because you know why? If you've got the determination and discipline to carry a job through, that's half the battle done. And I know I've got the right people around me. I've got the best team in the world in boxing around me, and I'm lucky for that. I'm completely blessed by that. But at the end of the day, I know that I can outwork fights because am I the most talented? No. Am I the most dedicated and do I work the hardest? Probably one of them, yeah. Because I don't cut any corners, because I can't afford to cut any corners, because I ain't no Muhammad Ali, I ain't no Sugar Ray Leonard. I've got to put the work in. I understand that. But I'm very different to every other fighter, because I've got an avenue here where I've got fights that are lucrative, 
which set me and my family up and it takes all the stresses away. And I've gone and took them. And I'm sure anybody else would in my position with a young kid, you know, here, they would do what they've got to do to make sure the family's okay. I've done that. That part's covered. Now I'm on to fulfilling that dream to myself. Not to anybody else. I don't care what he looks like to anybody else. Everybody else could think, you know what, this guy is just talking a load of baloney. He's, he's no good. He's this. He's never going to be this. But I've got the heart and determination to see it through because I know there's been lesser men than me that's won a world title. And I've got it up here. And once you believe it, you can achieve it. Tommy, I want to ask you, what would you be your biggest, biggest piece of advice? Um, I know you're a businessman as well as, as, well as a boxer. Um, not well, like you, not like you. Well, you know, you're, you're trying still, you know. Um, <laughs> what you, I need to be careful, he's going to kick my ass. <laughs> I'm, making, I'm making the most of him having a bad hand right now. Oh, yeah. um, what would be your biggest advice for people just having like a champion mindset, having that, having that dogged determination to win, whether that be in business, whether that be in, in, in fighting, whatever it is, because I think mentality is key. Um, some days you might not be feeling like it. It takes a lot of discipline. But what would be your biggest advice for people wanting to have that, adopt that mentality, that winning champion mentality, what are you saying? I would say that is everything. You know, no matter whether you're an accountant, professional boxer, tennis player, rugby player, whatever. Like, it doesn't matter. Even if you're working at Aldi, it doesn't matter. You know, I think whatever you're doing and whatever you're... First of all, I think whatever you're doing in life, you should be happy in because life is too short to spend a lifetime doing a job that you're unhappy with. I think that first and most of all. Life is too precious to spend it unhappy. So, I know I'm talking like a 50 year old man, but I'm really not, but that's just what I believe. Do something that you're happy in. But a mindset for me is everything because without a mindset, I would not be where I am today. I would not be here in front of you guys, no way. I don't know what I'd be doing, but it wouldn't be here. Mindset is the only thing that has got me to where I am. Because it wasn't for handouts. If it, if it was for handouts, I've got four other brothers that aren't in the spotlight or whatever, they would all be here too. It's not about that. It's not for handouts. It's about having a dream. It's about having the determination and the balls to go out and get it. Because at the end of the day, if you haven't got the mindset and you don't believe in yourself, you ain't going to achieve nothing. Yeah. What was it? Because um, I was just chatting with Ricky last week and um, Ricky was like, oh man, Tommy says he wants to come down. In fact, you jumped on the phone with me. Yeah, I did. You're like, oh, we're going to move around. I'll come down to your program. I see what you've been doing. Um, what was it that made you agree to come down and, and, be, and be with everybody tonight? What was it? Do you know what it was? It was a, it was a great friend. It was a great friend over dinner. Excuse me. Don't cry, bro. <laughs> Take some tissues, bro. I need some he tissues. Was, he was burping, bro. Don't worry. It was just a day. It was just a day, you know, I'm here for Ricky, you know, he's a, he's a, great, fr he's a great friend of mine. This is what he does day in and day out. This is his living, you know, and I'm, I'm sure when I fight, he'll come and support me and see what I do. But I just wanted to see what he does because, you know, my life is pretty re repetitive. You know, it might be one thing or whatever, but I, there was nothing more that I wanted to do today than come and see my friend living his dream. This is, this is his dream. This is what he loves doing. And who am I to say, do you know what, Ricky? I can't come and do that today because I've got to take a picture. I've got to do this. I've got to go to the gym. I can go to the gym anytime. I'm going to go to the gym after this. But what I want to see is Ricky with a smile on his face, me to be up here with him and these great gentlemen beside me and just have this moment in time. Although you was the reason that Ricky didn't come. Ricky, this is a question for you, really. I want to know why, why didn't you come skiing with us in January? <laughs> oh, man. So these guys, our team, right, they go skiing earlier in the year and I'm invited to go on this skiing trip. And at the same time, me and Tommy are going on a surprise skiing trip. It wasn't the same time, bro. It was a different month. The dates were up in the air, so I couldn't confirm. I didn't know what was going on. So I'm like, oh damn, do I go with like, I just didn't know what. Do I go with Samuel or Tommy? <laughs> Well, Fuck you. I mean, what Tommy said was like really, like, I, I, man, I, I, it was, it, what he said is really like sweet, bro. I mean, geez. Because. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what I thought it was. Be on the road together all the time, bro. I booked a private jet to go skiing, and I booked us a beautiful hotel. And the, the private jet was a surprise, but the hotel, everyone was chipping in. And Ricky said to me, you sort the hotel, we'll all, we'll all chip in. And there's about 10 of us going, right? So I booked the hotel. I can't remember how much it was exactly. It was a ridiculous amount. It wasn't that expensive. It was expensive. Like there's nine of us. It was ridiculous. So I booked it, and then Ricky messaged me and went, 
nah, 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 nah. Right. So I thought, oh man. So I then downgraded the the hotel to like a regular a regular hotel, no problem. But then I thought, fuck, I'm not getting a private jet for these top and tailing cunts like you know, complaining about the price. <laughs> so I cancelled the jet, cancelled the jet. But then it turned out it wasn't price that was issued. But Ricky just said, uh, oh, nah, I just can't make it. So then we ended up on Ryanair. <laughs> Goes, in, an, in, an average, in an average hotel, there's eight of us, Ricky's not there. Then Ricky's not there. Then a week later, Ricky sends me a video of him going skiing in a private jet with Tommy Fiore. <laughs> I send him I send in, I send in a video and I'm like, now who's top and tailing? You know what I'm saying? And do you know what's funny though? Like, um, <laughs> when you speak about, um, you know, a champion's mentality and a champion's mindset, I mean, my question for Tommy is, why didn't you have that same mindset with boxing and champ as you do with skiing? I mean, let me, oh, sorry, that was a bit deep, wasn't it? I'm, I'm sorry, bro. But let me, let me tell you the story, right? Here, right, this is what happens. So we go skiing, and I've never skied before. The guys we have, even fin, Finn's in the room, at the back of the room, so I'm skiing, Finn's, like, he's a snowboarder and stuff. I'm, like, I'm gonna take it upon myself. I'm going skiing with the boys, right? I'm gonna learn how to ski. Cause I'm, I'm not gonna go skiing and not be able to ski. So I have lessons. Me and my fiance, Perry, we, we all had lessons. And everyone can ski. Tommy turns up and I'm like, can you ski? And he's like, no. But I'll, I'll have some lessons, it'll be fine. Like it's all good, I'll be able to pick it up quick. <laughs> so, on, on one of the days, he's got some ski lessons in the morning, and then the plan is he's gonna go for these ski lessons with this instructor. And in France, in Courchevel, the instructors are like unreal. It's like you can learn how to ski in two hours, and then you can hit the slopes. So we're like, all right, cool. You go get these ski lessons, two hours, you do four hours, and then we'll all go skiing out together. So Tommy goes on the lessons, and he's out there for about four hours. All of us guys, we, we hit the slopes and start skiing. We come back four hours later to the, to the villa that we had, um, the chalet, and Tommy's not there. So we're thinking, first of all, is he okay? Has he been hurt? And we ring the instructor, and he's not hurt. He's all good. They'll be back soon. So then we're thinking, well, why is it taking so long? And we wait there another two hours. It was like the longest two hours of my life. Because I don't know if you've been skiing, but when you've been skiing, when you're in the chalet and you're all booted up, all you want to do is hit the slopes, right? And we're waiting for Tommy, man, and the time is dragging. And we're all sat there in the little lobby bit where all of our gear is, just thinking, where the hell is he? We just want to get out on the slopes. Six hours later, there's a knock on the door, right? And we're thinking, thank goodness, Tommy's back. Now we can go and hit the slopes and have some fun. The door opens, the instructor stood there, and Tommy stood behind him, and he's like, all sheepish and shit. <laughs> and we're looking at the, the instructor, doesn't even say a word, he just shakes his head and he's like, can we hit the slopes? And he's like, I wouldn't advise Tommy goes out there. <laughs> what happened, bro, what happened? What happened is, uh, you got an inexperienced skier going down the biggest slopes in France, which is not a good idea. Um, yeah, I can safely sit here and say that skiing is not for me. Um, it's more I dangerous never... than boxing, you know? Oh, no, no, I know that, mate. Everyone gets worried about me boxing these days, mate, and I'm I like, Man. was nearly Numero, I was game over. I nearly broke yeah, both of my legs. No, they said to Tommy, we advise you not to, he still did it. No, it's because I got that personality where, do you know what? If someone says I can't do it, I want to go and do it. So, for the first time ever, though, this other than football, as I'm sure many as you know. Um, the guy said to me, he's like, are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll have a go. So I found myself on my hands and knees, almost in tears on the baby slopes. <laughs> I've got like eight and nine year olds passing, passing me by like at a, at a speed. I'm like, so what is going on here? Like, this can't be real. So yeah, I, I will go to skiing again for the vibe, for everything that was great. Skiing, no, finished. Case closed. You've got, yeah, give him a hand, give him a hand. I'm sure one day, I, in fact, we're, 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 we're probably gonna go on another ski trip next year and I'm gonna like force him to have lessons so we don't have to wait for him to have lessons while we're down. I'm sure it'd be good and we'll show you the clip when Tommy can ski. Never. Are you, are you better at skiing or football? Oh, great question. <sighs> Do you know what? I think it has to be skiing, mate. <laughs> yeah, mate. I am not a baller, honestly. I swear to God. Do you know what the funniest thing is? A quick story, right? I was in Dubai once with the missus. <laughs> what? I walked by the pool, right? And this this live guy came up to me. And he was like, "Oh, you 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 play for City? Yeah, yeah, you play for City." I was like, "Hey, so what? Excuse me? He's like, you footballer?" I said, "Yeah, I'm a footballer." Yeah. <laughs> He said, he said, where do you play? I said, ah, midfield, midfield, yes. He said, what number? I said, 
Uh, I don't know, chop and change, midfield, midfield. I don't even know what number of midfield there is, I haven't a clue. So I played it off for about half the day. <laughs> and then the guy seen me kick a ball to some kids that kicked the ball over. The guy looked at me and he was like, this is not who I thought it was. <laughs> and then, yeah, oh, that's, about as, that's about as high profile as a footballer I've ever been. Tommy, what was your favourite movie? Right, I don't know how many people's going to know this in here, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, I'm a massive horror fan. Love horror films. My favourite film of all time is Halloween 1978. Yes! Yes, love that. Love what, what, about, what about if it wasn't that movie, though? Considering it's fitting. Yeah. I love the Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, 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 oh! Are you sure? I'm not fucking leaving. You're not fucking leaving? <laughs> J Tommy, you like the Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah. Um, I got you a little gift, brother. I'm glad you said Wolf of Wall Street. I got you a little gift. What is it, a briefcase full of money? What's that? This, this is, this is on behalf of, of everybody on the academy. This is a, li a little small token to say it's thank you. It's not gonna blow up in my face, is it? No, 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 no. There you go, there's a little gift for you. I hope you like it. Open it up, open it up. Read it out, bro. Dear Tommy, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate your time. Love Samuel Leeds and the team. No that's a gift, a piece of paper. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Do you know what? Me and you can have a spa later. Hold on, we're going to spa, yeah? yeah Not I'll necessarily now. One hand you can use too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm down, I'm down. And look at, look at us, there's a little something else. Get, put the mic near his mouth so we can hear his amazed reaction. There's no money in there, mate. Yeah, there's no money in there. We don't care. No, we couldn't pay you enough. It's better than money. <laughs> Tommy Fury, join me for a dinner with Jordan Belfort. Oh, my God. No way. The 12th of I want to introduce you to the wolf. Oh, my God. Wow. That is crazy. 12th of October, 7.30. Wow, in London. If you're free, you're welcome to come and join me and Jordan. Uh, I'll make sure I'm free, mate. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Amazing. 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 Well, guys, we're going to continue networking, but uh, can we show some love to Tommy and the team? Thank you so much, guys. Tommy.